Hi, this is Professor Kuntz, and we're going to go over the site of El Tajin Veracruz today through a series of um, YouTube videos instead of doing this in a class. What I hope to do is delineate the importance of El Tajin and to take you through some of the most important sculpture and speak to its meaning and some of its um, some of stylistic importance as well. El Tajin is a Mesoamerican capital, make no mistake. This is not a secondary site or a site that was unimportant during the time in which it was uh, really at its height. And that was between about 600 and maybe as late as 1000 AD. So between about 600 and 1000. This was a site that, at least in its region, uh, was the most important major urban center uh, in that region. Tahin has a couple of things that are remarkable and diagnostic to uh, El Tahin, the site and the culture. The one that I think most people latch on to and that interests a great many people is the fact that it is full of ball courts. Uh, if you look carefully in this overview, you will see uh, at least four major parallel structures that define that central area, which is the ball court. The, these ball courts ring the pyramid area towards the upper center of the overview here. This is um, there are at least 11 in the uh, central area here, and I say at least because some of them are in the um, jungle area, just outside the excavated or cleared areas, and we may find more. Uh, eventually, we may find several more in the outlying areas. But what's, what's certain is that uh, the ball game and these ball courts played a central role in the life of the city, and almost certainly in the image of the people who patronized these architectural wonders, who, who paid for the building. Uh, this is not, however, as unusual as, as sometimes people like to make it, because in fact, during this period between 600 and 1,000, uh, there is a vogue for many ball courts in the center of the city. El Tahin just seems to be a particularly clear example of this. Now, we finally get to where El Tahin is. As you can see in this map, Tahin is on the Gulf Coast, or very close to the Gulf Coast, towards the north of our culture area. In fact, this is about as far north as we are going to go uh, to look at a major Mesoamerican city. Uh, there are a few interesting urban uh, spaces north of El Tahin, but very few are as spectacular and as important as substantial as El Tahin. So again, look towards the right on the Gulf, and you can see that Tahin is included in this in this area called the Classic Gulf Coast. And the reason that means anything at all is because these peoples share uh, certain motifs, oftentimes an interest in scroll patterns, and they share some really interesting and idiosyncratic sculptural forms, the biggest of which, and by far the most widespread of which, is the yoke, uh, that U-shaped, heavy, uh, often beautifully carved stone object that appears up and down the classic Gulf Coast. Now, this is not the only place that yokes appear. They appear uh, in sporadically in classic Maya cities, especially at the very end. They appear much more importantly you know, on the Pacific Coast, uh, not too far from where uh, on this map Tonala uh, is named. But it has always been understood that this form uh, was really emanating from the Gulf Coast. If not made there, certainly it was related to people who wanted, it was for people something that related 
to the Gulf Coast. This is what uh, National Geographic artist thinks Tahini looked like at its apogee. It certainly was painted uh, in the, the blue pyramid that you see towards the right center of your screen. Uh, was actually painted blue. We know that the paint, or we have the paint traces from that building. Uh, we have the paint traces of red in many of the other buildings. There were, if you can see towards the center of the, the um, slide, there were multiple temples on top of some of the pyramids. Uh, and there were these areas above, especially to the right of this image. As you, as you go up the, uh, the side of a hill, in fact, that was redone to uh, contain these platforms, that, that was reworked by humans to contain these platforms, other pyramids, and especially a lot of palace and palace-like structures. This, this, was, this is really there. It's very clear when you're at the site today, that there was an upper Tahin, or what is often called Tahin Chico, uh, up in the top right of this image, and then there was a lower Tahin, which is in the center of this image, uh, and that was the major ceremonial center, the sort of heart of the urban area. On the top left is not so much part of the ceremonial center, or part of the, the central urban area, but was uh, a rich neighborhood, a place where there were obviously important and wealthy people living there and then scattered all in between and all around the city were, were up to 20,000 commoners who lived uh, in and around the ravines that define a tahin. The other thing that defines tahin is a very specific architectural style and it is called the niched architectural style. In fact, the central building at El Tahini, by far the most famous building uh, at the site, and in fact the most famous building in all of classic Veracruz culture, is called the Pyramid of the Niches. Now this, in fact, this is not part of the Pyramid of the Niches, but the building uh, structure is exactly the same. You have these little window-like units that go into the body of the architecture, and these are were referred to long ago as niches. Perhaps they served some function as a niche uh, to uh, contain incense burners or something similar, but we don't know that. What we are sure is that this niched look was absolutely crucial for the city of El Tahin. In fact, when they created satellite centers uh, over the course of their, their apogee, their zenith, uh, they too, these satellite centers, also received this niched architecture.